Hey guys, thank you for joining me this morning. I really, I really feel like chains are going to be broken this day. And Lord God, I pray that you will just be with us this day as I preach this sermon called Come Alive that you gave to me, God. And I thank you for all your wonderful people this morning that are watching and that will be watching and that will be blessed by this thing. And God, I thank you for your grace and your wonderful, wonderful men. Lord God, everything, Lord Jesus, that you have for me to say, I will say with clarity. And, and precision. Lord God, I give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, hi guys. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. I know I am. And the Lord gave me a word last night. He said, come alive. He said, he said, come alive. He said, I am more for you than you could ever dream of. Sometimes we are, we are just so busy with that whole life thing, with, be, with um, being so caught up in our lives and caught up in what is going on that we are just kind of dead inside. And he wants us to come alive. He wants us to um, absorb the fact that he loves us and that his grace is sufficient for whatever we're going through. And I, would, I wrote a letter to someone a few weeks ago and said, at the beginning of the letter, I said, jump in and swim. And what I meant by that was just just to jump in and swim towards peace, swim towards success. And when I say success, I mean living out the purpose that God has for you. That's my definition of success. And I, a couple of weeks ago, I heard about someone who committed suicide. Now, I didn't know the person. Now, and that got me to thinking of how, how short life is and how people really need our love and care. I, I often say this, we don't see people anymore. And that really got me thinking of, um, how many people walk past that person on a daily basis and, and didn't know that anything was wrong? I think that sometimes we just need to slow down and understand that people need us. People need our love. People need our support. People need our care. And people need to know that Jesus loves them. And what I was thinking of, I was thinking of my ministry and the, the, whole, the whole ministry deal that God will have for me in the future. I was thinking that instead of uh, inviting people to church and sharing the gospel right off, that I think that that it's uh, pertinent to start with what people know and what people can understand and what people need and that is love. If you start from a place of how are you um, and really focus on how the person is and what the person is feeling or doing they'll open up to you. I think one of the downfalls in the church is 
that we focus so much on trying to get people into the kingdom. It's not our job. That's God's job. It's our job to be the hands and feet of Jesus. It's to show them what they're missing. It's to show them love and to show them care. And, um, and that is what we are designed to do. That is what we are called to do. That is what we are made to do. Um, when we, when I think of majority of people out there, they are so depressed. Um, they are so worried. They are so fearful. And all they need is hope. All they need is love. All they need is understanding. And I think if we can start from a place of that, I think that people will flood the kingdom if we really are the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's just be it. And I was thinking, I said uh, about uh, depression and the whole spirit of sadness. And I really feel in my spirit that the Lord is, is wanting people to embrace the river of joy, to come out of sadness to come out of pain, to come out of um, just living, and just to embrace the river of joy. And he's saying today that joy is waiting. He's saying that peace is waiting. He's saying that love is waiting. He's saying all that you, all that you want, all that you have dreamed is waiting for you. All you need to do is jump in and swim for it, like I said in that person's letter. And I, and even if it's just on the kiddie pool, and even if it's just a little bit, and even if you can only wade in the pool, if you can even float in the pool, that's what he wants. He just wants you to take a step even if it's a baby step, even if it's a, you know, whatever step. He just wants to see that you're working and he'll work with what you have. He'll start from where you are and bring you to where you want to be. You don't have to have all the answers. He'll, he will do the work if he can see that you're willing. To, to swim out of failure into faith, to swim out, out of darkness into light. He just wants you to, to swim where you are, even if it's in the kiddie pool. He just wants you to swim where you are, jump in and swim right where you are, and he will do the rest. Quite often we think that we need to do this big thing, but we don't. We just need to start from where we are and he will take the rest of it. Yeah, start from where we are and he will take the rest of it. Start from sadness and swim towards joy. Start from pain and swim towards swim towards peace. If if we just swim towards it, he'll see us and then he'll help us. But if we continue to sit down and say, God, you'll do this, it won't happen. But if he sees that we're swimming towards it, that we're doing our best, that he'll put, our, he'll put his super on our natural and we, will, and we will do it. He wants us to come alive. He wants us to live the be his best life 
for us that he has. He has a life for us waiting there that we could have never dreamed. And what we thought is our, our best life is nowhere near what God has planned for us. He has so much planned for us if we just take that step. Even if it's, like I said, in the kiddie pool. Like, if we start from the kiddie pool and build up, like, if we start from kiddie faith and build up, pretty soon we'll be swimming like in Olympic pools. And I think that, like, we tend to want to start with big faith, big dreams, big something. Yes, but everything big starts small. And I don't think we've embraced the art of starting small. Um, we don't, we don't, we know how to dream big do this big and all that, but everything big starts small. And you've got to understand that there is a learning process. When you start a business, I've learned this from my own personal life. When you start a business, it's best to start small because when you start small, you can work out the kinks, you can work out the things that are wrong but when you start when you tr try and bite off more than you can chew and when you try and start big that's where the problems happen that's where you can't control profits or that's where you don't know how to um, lead people you don't know how to do certain things in regards to your business but if you start small, you can work up the kinks. So if you start with small faith, like the faith, the grain of uh, the size of a mustard seed, you can work out the, um, the kinks in your faith. You can work out the um, issues in yourself if you start small. But there there is something with starting where you're hidden because then if you start with, when you're hidden and when no one no, knows you you can you can as i said before work out all the kinks in your faith work out the things that you need to get to where you are a lot of people want instant fame but instant fame is not too good because you don't know how to deal with certain things. You don't ha know how to deal with money when you get it. You don't know how to deal with staff when you get it, when you get them. You don't know how to lead people or form a meeting or do all the nuances of your, of your fame. You're just thrown into it. So appreciate the Lord is saying this today he's saying appreciate the dark place yes God he's saying he's saying appreciate the dark place he's saying I'm with you in the dark place and when I'm ready I will catapult you in the light he's saying appreciate the dark place he's saying appreciate the dark place and come alive in the dark place. Come alive in the dark circumstance. And understand that joy is, is constant and happiness is situational. Like happiness, one, one day I'm happy, one day I'm not. But joy is constant. Whatever's going around, going on in your life. Whatever's going on in your life, you can have joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. 
the joy of the Lord makes you able to face the devil. Because they say praise is a weapon. I also believe that joy is a weapon. When you come at the devil with joy, he doesn't know what to do with it. When you're going through pain and you come at the devil with peace, he doesn't know what to do with it. There is a river of peace. There is a fountain of joy waiting for you. If you would just be man or woman enough to reach for it, to swim for it, to grab for it, he will meet you there and pull you through. Whatever you can't do, he'll do. Just, beloved, please take that first step toward joy. Take that first step towards peace. Take that first step towards love. I know it's scary, beloved, but, but the Lord is saying, I will be with you in this. I will be with you in this. You're not alone. You won't break. This situation won't break you. It'll come out better. Just just be just be joyful in the dark place just come alive in the dark place it might seem it might seem dark but this dark place is for a purpose this dark place is for a time this dark place is for a season this dark place I'm declaring right now will bring you a death a testimony that you could never believe will bring you a testimony that will sh shock the world with how the devil was defeated and God was proved true. Rejoice in the dark place. And I know, beloved, it's difficult to rejoice in the dark place. But rejoicing in the dark place builds you your swimming muscles. Remember I said about about uh, jumping in and swim? Well, rejoicing in the hard times is a way to, to build your muscles. You build muscle strength. You build arm strength. You build back strength. So have joy and rejoice and come alive in, in the dark place. Come alive in the river of joy. Come alive in the fountain of peace. Stop walking around like you're dead. The Lord is with you. You understand the, how much the Lord of the universe is fighting for you, how much he is strengthening you, how much he is in your business, how much he is in your family, how much he's in your church, how much he's in your office or your work life or your school life. You understand how much he loves you. I wish you could understand how much he loves you, how much he's fighting for you, how much he's willing to do everything he can for you. How much he's willing to, to go to bat for you. How much you are his child. How much he loves you. How much he's, how much he's willing to fight for you. I wish you knew, beloved, how much he's thinking of you. How much he's loving on you. How much he's saying, yeah, that's my daughter. That's my son. I don't know if you have kids. I don't have kids. I just have nephews. But I... One of my nephews plays... Two of my nephews play basketball. And I could just imagine my sister, their mom, go saying, Go, Daniel. Go, Joshua. That's my son. That's, that's my son. Go, honey. And that's what the Lord is doing. The Lord saying, go, go, that's my, that's my son, that's my daughter. You understand what it is like 
to be the daughter of God, to be the son of God, it, it is just mind blowing. And he wants you to embrace the river of joy. He wants you to come alive with peace. He wants you to come alive with gladness. He wants you to just be just who he's created you to be. You are not in competition with anybody. He wants you to be who he's created you to be. He wants you to embrace who he's created you to be. He wants you to, to stop pretending to be something that you're not and come alive and embrace who he's created you to be. Well, people say live your truth. I would say, I wouldn't say live your truth because your truth is about you. But I would say live his truth for you. So he wants you today to live his truth for you. He wants you to go outside with boldness and with bravery and attack life. And attack life to the best of your ability and realize that he is with you. He will not let you fall. And even if he does let you fall, it is for a purpose purpose it is for a reason it is to live out his ultimate destiny for you and really purpose is about starting where you are into where he wants you to be sometimes we think that it's purpose is about doing this big thing but usually it's about starting where you are and being who he wants you to be, living the life he wants you to live. He, he is so in love with you, beloved, and he wants you to be successful where you are. He wants you to be purposeful in the storm. The storm is for a purpose. The storm is for healing. The storm is for restoration. The storm may destroy everything, but the storm also builds, builds things. It builds character. It, it builds persistence. It builds constance. It builds everything. And what, when I think of storms, and Katrina, um, the, the building of whole communities and the building whole structures happened when the storm happened. And I'm a big proponent of community as you guys have seen from my last few videos. And the storm builds community. There is nothing, you've heard there is nothing uh, to get people away from you like a storm. Well, there's nothing like um, people being able to pull together like being in a storm. This storm will bring people in your life that you need for your next level. This storm will bring people in your life that you need for your next level. So embrace the storm and hold on tight and swim for your life. Swim like you've got nothing to lose. And you have got nothing to lose because Christ is in you and he is a winner and he always wins. There is no battle that he could ever lose. He cannot fail. And once he's on your side, girl, boy, you got it. So go for it. Go for that business. Go for your success. Go for his success in your life. Go for that relationship and realize that failure is part of the process. Swim towards faith. Swim towards 
finances swim to swim towards it even if you don't get there right away swim towards it keep on swimming until you get to the end of the pool and when you get out of the pool and on the other side you'll see all what that stone was for you'll see why you had to swim so hard you'll see what your arms ache and your back aches and also and also it in swimming you might get pain but pain is a part of the process pain is a very um important part of the process because your pain teaches you where you hurt and never to forget where you came from some christians uh, love to forget where they came from love to look down their nose on people because um they're 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 where they used to be but your pain is part of the process your pain is to remind you where, what it took to get there you don't live in pain you embrace the pain but you embrace it to let it fuel, fuel you you don't embrace it to let it keep you back a lot of people are embraced by pain because they let it keep them back but if they embrace it as fuel and use it to push on and use it to swim on then it's worth something this pain is worth something this storm is worth something you're not going through this just to um just to let it let it sit there you're going through this as a testimony you're going through this because you you went through financial difficulty because because you have to speak to people that have gone through uh, financial difficulty you went through medical illnesses because you have to speak to people that have gone through medical illnesses depression breaks today depression breaks today the river of joy is flowing the river of peace is flowing the river of faith is flowing fear is dismantling fear is dismantling fear is dismantling where there was confusion about purpose there is focus Thank you, Lord. Where there was confusion about purpose, there is focus. Lord God, I declare that by the power of the Holy Spirit, people are coming into their awareness of who you've designed them to be. God, I pray that they will be who you designed them to be. I rebuke the spirit of distraction and depression by the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare that chains are breaking now. I declare that peace is coming now. I declare that love is coming now. I declare that joy is coming now. I declare that success, living out the purpose that you have planned for us is coming now. I declare that where there was failure, I declare that now there's faith. I declare that people are jumping in the kiddie pool if they have to and swimming towards their destiny. I declare that people are jumping into that business and swimming towards the success of that business. I declare that business owners are just rising up and embracing their calling to do whatever business you design them to do. God, I declare that health is being restored. I declare that people will live and not die. I, I dismantle whatever the doctor said by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and I declare that you will live and not die. I declare that you will live and not die. I declare that you will live and not die in the name of Jesus. I declare life. I declare life that that flows from your fountain, God. I declare life that is rising from the tide of despair. I declare that life is is our portion, not death. You will live and not die, sister. You will live and not die, brother. In that dark place, you will live and not die. You will live and not die. I declare that demons are trembling because you're getting up. I declare that people listening to the sound of my voice are getting up. I declare that people listening to the sound of my voice are being restored. I declare that people listening to the sound of my voice are, are, are getting up from apathy, Lord God, and, and swimming towards their destiny. I declare that you are strengthening your people, oh God. Strengthen them for the journey. Strengthen them for the ups and downs, God. Strengthen us, God. Strengthen us. We need you to be with us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. So guys, I thank you for watching me today. And see you next week. We come alive in the river. 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 We come alive. I will. I believe that things that were dead are coming alive at the very moment. I believe that things that were broken are being put together. I believe that families that were broken are being put, in, put together in this very moment. Everything that you thought that was a mistake or uh, that shouldn't have happened, God is working together for his good. I believe that God is going to surprise you this week. I believe that God is going to bring his purpose together in ways that you could not imagine. Just swim towards it. Even if it's just a little swim, just swim towards it. Just swim towards it. I know it's fearful. I know you're feeling around in the dark, but he's there. He knows the pain. He knows the struggle. He knows the nights crying up at night saying, Lord, you gave me this thing. It's, but it feels like it's not going to work out. He says, hold on. He says, keep on swimming. He says, keep on keeping the faith. He says, keep on, keep on thinking success. Keep on praying, keep on fasting, keep on believing. He's saying, don't give up, because right now, around the corner, is your destiny. And everything that you've seen, that you've been seeing in your dreams, everything that, that has been keeping you up at night, will come to pass. He's saying it will come to pass. He's saying it will come to pass. He's saying it will come to pass. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Everything that you're doing is not for nothing. He's just putting the pieces together for you. He's, he's building structures that you have no idea that he's building. People are seeing you that you have no 
idea that our seeing you, people of influence, are going to come knocking on your door and wanting to fund your business, wanting to fund your ministry. That man or that woman that you've been praying for, they're just around the corner. God sees that you've been faithful all the Saturday night home alone, all the, all, all the wedding pictures that you saw your friends on Facebook, and the fact that you never had mouths towards them, the fact that you always said congratulations and never had a jealous spirit towards them. He's going to reward that. He sees all that. Everything you've done in secret for the kingdom, how you served the kingdom in secret. He said you were passed over, but there's going to be no more passing over. People are going to see who you really are, and people are going to flock to the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this video this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for the people that are rising up, Lord God. Thank you for a generation that is just going after you, God. We're not going after fame. We're not going after fortune. We're going after you, God. We're going after you. We're swimming towards you like our lives depending on it, Lord Jesus. We bless you. We love you. We honor you, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. We bless you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. I'll see you next week, guys. Bye. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river.